In this video, I'll be showing you how to use Subtitle Edit to make captions for YouTube videos. Yeah, there's a built-in thing on YouTube.com, but it's a simple web app, doesn't have any features. And you can also use Subtitle Edit to create files for things other than YouTube. It supports multiple formats, so just go and download it. The installation process is simple, but when it comes out of the box, it doesn't quite work. Because if you need to edit a video, you drag it in, you get this error. You don't have the codex, and this is very unhelpful because you're like, I just got a program, why can't I play videos? And this message isn't exactly helpful, but I'll show you what you need to do. It's actually quite simple. They made a little help page here to show you how to connect it to VLC, because I already have VLC as a standalone application on my computer, but this video player, either you have to install a bunch of codecs for your computer globally, or you can just use a portable VLC, which means instead of installing with an EXE that's going to put it in program files, this is a completely portable version you could copy to another computer, you just extract it, and that's why it's a zip folder. So once it's downloaded, you just need to extract here rename this to capital VLC. Now go find where you installed subtitle edit. It's this 32-bit program, so it's going to be in program files 86. Go to subtitle edit, and then just copy or cut and paste it into this installation directory. Then you need to restart the program. I just closed it. Now we're not quite done. We need to tell it to use VLC. So go into options and settings, then into video player. Right now it's on direct show, but we don't have the direct show. So change it to VLC and then browse for this path. And I'm just going to copy this path where we put VLC, paste it in. It's looking for an EXE, so go into the VLC folder, open. OK, now you can successfully drag in the video. Hooray! And if this waveform doesn't pop up, you'll just say click to add waveform. Now you can add subtitles. This does look like Windows Media Player, but it's not. File open is actually open the subtitle files. This has to do with creating the text file. If you want to change the video, you just drag it in. Now making a subtitle is simply as clicking here, right click and say add text here. And you can do that again. Then if you click the cursor here and you play, you notice, hey look, my little subtitle, it's right over here. It can be kind of time consuming, but that's how subtitles are. If you happen to have a transcript of your video, that helps immensely. So I'm just going to be copying from another document. I'm going to delete these two, which is the same thing as going up here and hitting delete. And then I was just going to drag here and do right click. Instead of add text, add text from clipboard because I've copied it. And what do you know? There it is. The next sentence, I'm just going to skip through this. And of course you can see here I'm scrolling left and right. And you can use this thing. Control scroll also zooms. PHP errors. If you've ever done any serious web development volume PHP, you know that getting you sync text errors is a huge pain because PHP usually just dies. That's the basic gist of what we need to do here. A bunch of clicking and dragging. You can change the entire subtitle, or you can click on the end and say, hey, I want it a little further. If I play from the beginning and I stop, you see this blue line? It's remembering the last one I changed, but if I'm listening to the entire thing and I notice, oh, I made a typo. Really helpful to have select current subtitle while playing. Because look, here it's on the first one. Now it's on the second one. You know, just advance and match where you are in the video. List view is just a bunch of events in order. You don't have to have them right next to each other. There can be gaps and stuff. Right now it's making an SRT file, which is what we want, but they have plenty of different files here. Once you have your subtitles kind of okay, you can say save as. And then just pick a name and save it. What has it done? It's created a little subtitle file I've associated to open with this. But there's nothing special about it. Because I can open VLC, and this is my actual non-portable version of VLC. If I drag in the video, and I actually drag in the subtitle file too. Subtitle track added. And if I play, what do you know? It's right here at the bottom. Hooray, that's the same thing as going subtitle. Add subtitle file. Now, if you make changes more here and click save, they won't automatically update in VLC, so you just need to go drag it in, and that is basically reloading the file. That's why this little player is helpful, because it's a little more real-time, but it's kind of jerky. So if you want to see it a little smoother, you can use VLC. Now this program doesn't allow you to have overlapping subtitles, because I'm dragging to the left and it's stopping. But what have we created? If I open this text file, there's nothing special about it. It's literally just a list of one, two, three, four. This is how many subtitles. Here's the text that's going to be displayed. And this is a time code of hours, minutes, seconds, and then milliseconds, I believe. Notice how the first one is starting basically at the very first frame of the video, ending at two and a half seconds in, and then this was a starting like right afterwards. What if we change the duration of this first one so that the second one actually starts before it ends? If I save that, you won't notice any change here until I reopen the program. Now you notice, uh-oh, we have an overlap. But it's not the end of the world because it does actually play. Play PHP errors. Have you ever done any serious web development volume PHP? This little section right here, this is the problem area. Though, if you notice in VLC... In this video, I'll be showing you how to display PHP errors. 
if you've ever done any series, see right there how it kind of overlapped? So VLC allows these, but this program says it's not a good idea. And I'm not actually sure the standards on subtitles. So if you actually want to have a little overlap, let's just fix that. Making them separate, make it happy again. Not that this is the case for the video, but if you actually want them to overlap, all you need to do is copy the first line, go into the second line, I just double click to edit that, then paste it in so that the text of the first line stays on screen a little longer. The display PHP app. You've never done any serious web development. And see how this first line looked like it stayed and this one was added? That's just the hack to do this. I don't really want to do that. Now there's plenty more things with this program, but it's basically just as simple as playing around and figuring out how long is your subtitle going to last. Now adding them to YouTube or Vimeo is quite easy. Depends exactly where they put it, the UI changes all the time, but you go to the subtitles and closed caption setting. And then right now you add a new subtitle, you have to say what kind of language it is first. Now you have four options. We made a subtitle file. Transcribe, auto sync, that's not very good. So we're going to upload a file. We're going to upload a subtitle file, not a transcript. And then you say choose file. And we're just going to call it subtitles, upload. If this box disappears, you can get it again by upload a file. That'll overwrite the old one. But what do you know? Look, this agrees exactly with what the subtitle editor program did. In this video, I'll be showing you how to display PHP errors. If you've ever done any And there we have our subtitles. And of course, the closed captions are completely changeable by the people, so you don't really have control about how they appear. But it's really just as simple as transcribing your video, figuring out how long they're going to stay on screen, uploading the file, and we're happier that you can go ahead and click publish.